So these are the five things that you need to ask an estate agent before you actually purchase the property. Property investing is one of your biggest investments, right? And Lebo, you've been through so many viewings and today what we really want to touch base on is crucial points before buying. Yeah, so the first one that I'd actually like us to touch on is that how much are the running costs of the property? Now, it's easy for someone to buy a property and say that, okay, the property is worth 700,000 and I'm signing on the offer to purchase for 700,000, only to find out that later on, your rates and taxes are actually skyrocket. You didn't know that you needed to pay for levies. So I'll make a classic example. So there was one property that we were about to buy yeah. and uh, they had told us that the rates and taxes were all paid by, by, the, by the people that are living in the property only to find out that it wasn't actually prepaid. It was on the owner's side. Now the rates and taxes of that particular property went up to around six or 7,000. Mm. Now, taking into consideration the numbers that we ran before, we had thought that that property the rates and taxes were only 1,500. Now, had you not asked for that rates and taxes statement, now that would have put you on a back foot because now you're asking yourself that, okay, now that I bought this property, how much should I pay on a monthly basis? If I bought the property for 700,000, that's 7,500 for, for my bond payment. And sometimes that's the only cost that a lot of people consider, mm -hmm. only to find out that your rates and taxes actually get up to 1,500. You bought in an estate levies 1500 now you got to 3000 plus 7500 the math 10500 now with 10500 you're asking yourself then that how do i actually mitigate the difference between what i had actually budgeted and what i'm actually going to be paying right now 100 percent especially when you're looking at it as a property investor those are then called your operating costs is that sometimes it even gets to a point whereby there's special levies I mean, some special levies. Some people have never heard the term special levies yeah. until they ought to pay special levies. So it's very important before buying a property, understanding it holistically. What will be my month to month expense? Yeah. Now, hit us up. What is number two? For me, right, there's a question whereby, in terms of what is the neighborhood like? That question sounds basic. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when you told me about it, I was like, okay. Like, when you're asking an estate agent, what are you trying to actually get out of that? But now, the thing is, that question is not only directed to the estate agent. Okay. It's also directed to people that are living within that property. Or well, the people that are within that property, your tenants, most importantly, your neighbors. Reason being, a lot of times, someone will buy into a neighborhood that they do not know. Mm. I know certain neighborhoods that have challenges when it comes to electricity. Now, if you saw a beautiful property within that community whereby people within that community know that, that's a red yeah. zone. Yeah. Now, with you coming from another community not knowing, mm. you might buy into a property that has problems when it comes to electricity. So now, are you saying that we should actually be asking people on the streets that what is the neighborhood like? I'm saying that you need to make sure that you get information not only from your estate agent, not only from your neighbors, however, even your tenants. Mm. Because that's where you really get an understanding of how everybody views the property. Okay. I'll give you another example. There's your tenants or the people that are no. in the house okay. at that time? Okay. The tenants that are currently occupying the house. Okay. I love it, man, when the owner's not there and I just see that I have a one-on-one -on -one an engagement with the tenants, so I'm, I'm going to ask them. Because they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you everything. Yeah. Because I've been in a situation whereby we asked the tenant something, the owner was there, but you could see in their reaction that there's something there. Mm. But anyways, I know an area that has a bad smell when it comes to sewer. Ish. And this has been happening for years. Mm. So it might be that the day you went there, or the time that you went there, that sewer was on its best behavior. Or sometimes you're actually excited about the property and you didn't smell the soup. You yeah. thought that somebody farted. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. It happens. Now, 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 imagine this, right? Especially looking at it, whether it's an investment or whether it's a property that you wanted to buy your mom's or it's a property that you wanted to buy the family and it was a surprise. Imagine that type of surprise that you'll be taking your family that, you know what, this area does have a problem with sewers. Yes. And, and lastly, man, the other one is the safety. 
right now we are in a situation whereby we've been a property yeah. whereby it they they, they the last it's one right? the last one which is safety right we, we've, I've taken this question for granted until I was in that situation. Mm. You can buy in an area that is a red zone when it comes to safety, whereby there's gangsterism, there's all of these things around. Mm. And now imagine living in a safe place and now you're exposed to I need cameras. Yes. Like right now we are in that situation whereby we've got someone to live in that property. However, these gangsters are still going in the property and you mm. ask yourself that, but what, what did we put ourselves in? So, and with that one there, the safety one is that you can actually even look at... So what the Standard Bank app does is that it tells you the crimes that have been reported in that area. Mm. So if they haven't been reported, unfortunately, it's tough to get. Ash, 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 Ash. Now, the question that I like, right, which is number two on my side, is that why is the owner selling? Now, sometimes it becomes hard for the estate agent to really tell you what the real reason of the person selling the property for right sometimes it becomes hard for the estate agent to tell you what's the real reason why the owner is actually selling the property now when you're putting yourself into their shoes i mean think about it from a commission perspective if they tell you that the owner needs to sell their property as fast as as soon as possible and they're desperate of course you're going to be throwing a low blow however or there's a sewer or there's a sewer, or there's a sewer smell that's going on around yeah. So you need to, and, and unfortunately, man, this comes with experience. The more you deal with estate agents, the more you get to understand that is this person actually lying or not. The more you are experienced, the more you can actually do your proper due diligence to understand that at what property did this person buy the property for and how much do they actually want to sell it for. So now, most of the time, when estate agents are selling properties, they'll say that, no, the person is actually relocating. And sometimes that's not true. The reason why you're asking why is the seller, why is the owner selling the property is just to gauge that what could be the possible reasons for that property to actually be sold. And sometimes you do get honest uh, estate agents that tell you that, okay, this person needs to move out of this property as soon as possible because it's about to get repossessed. Yeah. And final one from my side, right, is that have there been any major works being done on the property? Now, the thing about major work, there's cosmetic works whereby I'm painting. Paint, yeah. And then there's major works whereby Eight. I have erected a structure. Or you broke down walls, man. Well, I broke down walls. Reason being is that the real question is that, is it approved? And now, this is where the cash buyers, this is a special message to the cash buyers, needs to be very aware. Remember something, if I'm buying through the bank, the bank is going to send their experts to go to the property and ask for documentation so that they know as soon as they do give out the money to the mm. seller then they know that everything was on board the difficult part about cash buyers is that they sometimes do not know what the banks know so therefore when they are going to the property doing their due diligence mm. they might buy on emotions or they might buy or based on what they see, mm. not necessarily what they have in black and white. Yeah, because so, they don't understand the due diligence that they need to do. Hence, 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 cash buyers, you always need to be cautioned. And that's where we come in. And uh, if you are a property investor, you want to make sure that the due diligence, your due diligence is on point. Make sure that you contact us. There's a link in our bio whereby you can set up a Zoom. Yes, we know it's December, but we're still working throughout. So make sure that you con you make sure that you set up a Zoom, and we'll be more than happy to be your mentors. So go going back a little bit to the cash buyers, cash buyers, waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the cash buyers, right? Like, was that ultimately you need to know what the banks know, so mm. that you ask the relevant questions. Mm. Because now you putting in your 1.6 million only to find out that there's no papers. Or you found papers only to find out, yes, it was a, a draft, but it wasn't a print by the municipality. Yeah. Sometimes they even go as far as getting a stamp on it, but... The municipal doesn't know anything about it. The municipal doesn't know anything about it. Sure. So, ultimately, we need to make sure when it comes to any major work that was done, mm. we need to understand that. Mm. Now, the last one from my side is that how long has the property been on the market for? Now, this you don't get it from the estate agent, you actually get it from Property24. Now, the reason why this is actually important is that you are then able to go back and give them a cheeky offer. 
The reason why I'm saying this is that imagine if you are trying to sell your property and it's been on the market for the past, let's say, six months. Yeah. You really want to sell that property. If someone comes in with a low offer, chances are you might actually consider that offer because yeah. you haven't getting, been getting much. Now, the psychology behind people that sell their properties is that the more offers they're actually getting, the more arrogant they get and they can tell you that I, I don't want to look at this offer. Yeah. However, the less offers I'm actually getting, the more needy I am because I just need to sell this property as soon as possible. Now, when you do understand that if it's been more than six months, you know that you can actually give them a cheeky offer. And I'm not saying that every time they will accept. However, maybe this time after watching this video, you will find that right deal for you with that cheeky offer, man. Yeah. yeah. So what we're basically saying is that ask these five important questions before you actually purchase the property mm -hmm. so that you're putting yourself in a better position for buying the property. Yeah, man. And this year has been a really beautiful year. As I did mention, man, if you want our assistance when it comes to mentorship, make sure that you do book a Zoom meeting with us and we'll be more than happy to be your mentors. Invest like a pro? With no one. Cheers.